Hey, this is Jesse and Russell with Remax North San Antonio, and today we're going to be talking about homesteads. Hi, everybody. So, yes, it's that time again. I uh, want to make sure whether you're a new owner or you had your home for more than one, two, three, four, five, believe it or not, five plus years, we want to make sure you take care of your homestead. Yes, and then the next video is going to give you a step-by-step -step on what to uh, or how to fill out your homestead. Yes, however, keep in mind, that video is not like recent, <laughs> so <laughs> if, it's, if it's just like a, whatever year is going to be... This year! This year! <laughs> Any questions, let us know if you need a detail, I mean, yeah, details on your legal description or any other questions, let us know. Okay. Let's go ahead and review the form, uh, the, your homestead exception application. Let's go ahead and review it super fast for you. So first, of course, it's asking us for the appraisal district name. Let's go ahead and select. Uh, if you're in San Antonio, of course, it's going to be the Bear County, the Bear Appraisal District. If you're outside of San Antonio, then we will need to find out which one will be your um, your appraisal district that you're located in. Okay. And then, of course, the account number. If you don't have that account number, not to worry. Once you go to the appraisal district and provide them with the form, they should provide you that number as well. So you don't have to uh, super stress about that. Now it's asking if you own and you live in the property, which you're doing the homestead exception. So of course we're gonna go ahead and put yes. And then the tax year is gonna be, right now we're in 2020, the, the year. So remember it needs to be from the previous year. So we're gonna do 2019 in that tax year, okay? Now the first section, on this form is going to be asking for what type of exceptions we're going to be working on. The one that for sure we're going to be working is the general residence homestead exception. Uh, go ahead and review the rest of them. Uh, there might be some of them that additional that apply to you. For example, if you're a disabled person, if you're 65 or older, if you're 100% disabled veteran, thank you so much for your service. Go ahead and select that, please. And then, uh, so review this. If there's an additional type of exception that you know you qualify for, go ahead and select it so we can take care of that for you as well. Okay. And then, of course, uh, it's asking for the cooperative cooperative housing. If you have this type of housing, go ahead and put yes. If you have no idea what it, they're talking about, more than likely you don't have it. So just go ahead and select no. Uh, the rest of the questions, this is very important. For example, if you have a previous home where you had your homestead, uh, the homestead exemption in that home, then go ahead and put yes, okay? And then, of course, we are going to be transferring that homestead from the previous home to this home because, remember, it's only for one home, okay, and it's to be your primary residence. So go ahead and put yes if you're transferring. And then if you never had a home before, this is your first time, perfectly fine. Congratulations as well. So go ahead and put no under those questions, okay, because it will be your first home. If you're transferring any tax limitations, go ahead and put yes as well or no, depending if applies to you. Uh, if, uh, like I said, if we had a previous residence before, go ahead and put the, the address in here, the full address, the city, state, the zip code, and the previous county of that home that you had. Now, section two, uh, this is more information about the owner and applicant. Uh, in this case, you, of course, the one that is filling out the application. So there's like three options that we have in here. The first one is a single adult. Uh, we have married couples and then other, okay? So for example, if you're brother or sister, then go ahead and put other. If you are friends, two friends that decided to go get a home together, then definitely will be under other as well, okay? And then of course, if it's uh, only you, a single adult, then you will be filling out your information here, your date of birth right here, and it's giving us the format. So please go ahead and sell, um, follow that format. Uh, your driver's license, like we mentioned before, make sure it's the one matching your ID as well. So your license and and um, that you're going to present is going to be matching the same address. And then, of course, uh, your phone number. Now, the percentage ownership interest, this is going depending to how we select it. If it's a single adult, then it will be 100%. If you have married couple or other, then it will be 50%, okay? If it's two persons that owns the property, okay? And same thing right here, same information under name of property owner two, okay? Now, under section three, this is more information about the property. So go ahead and uh, put in here is when was the date that you acquired this property? Pretty much when you closed on your home. When you bought your home and closed on it and you started owning it, that will be your date. 
And then when you begin occupying this property, same thing. If you know that they go ahead and put it in here. And remember, as your principal residence, okay? Now go ahead and put your physical address, meaning your whole address in the home. If you notice it's saying no PO boxes, so make sure it is a physical address, not a PO box. Uh, it's asking you for the legal description. If you know that information, go ahead and fill it out, put it in here. If you don't, feel free to let us know and we'll be more than happy to guide you providing you that information for your legal description, okay? And uh, over here is also asking, uh, is the applicant identifying on deed or other recorded instruments? So of course, yes or no, depending the situation. Um, if this home was transferred to you, pretty much uh, you receive it like um, a help on the property. So put yes or no, depending the information. If this is the case, now there's additional documents that we will need to provide. So if you jump with me a really quick, really quick on page three, we have on page three important information, of course, but uh, in the event that the home was given to you as a will or transfer, on a, on a death deed or in instances, then go ahead and put yes, okay? And then this is the additional information that you're gonna need to provide once you go to the, um, uh, to the appraisal district so they can go ahead and assist you with all of this information, okay? So thank you so much. Now going back to our section, let's see here. Mm. Okay, that's proper information. So if you go with me under section three, it's also asking for information on the home. This is, for example, if you have a, a manufacturer home, then go ahead and put here the, the who was the make, the home make, the model of the home, and the ID number. That should be in all your information when you buy your, your home, uh, your manufacturer home. Uh, also, it's asking if any of this uh, portion of the property that you're claiming the homestead uh, does it give you any income producing, meaning do you own a business in that uh, property? If it's yes or no, go ahead and select the answer, okay, that best fits for you. And if you do own a business, it's asking you for, okay, what is the percentage of the income producing? Okay, go ahead and put it in here. Uh, also, it's asking for the size of your lot or your property. Go ahead and put it in here. That also will be under your tax information. And... Um, now, waiver of required documentation, this is under section four. Pretty much section four is if you are exempt of providing the ID or um, a state ID that needs to be issued, like it just telling you that you don't have to present your ID. In the event that you don't have to present it or you're not sure, it's pretty much asking you four questions here. If you feel under any of this questions and you said, yes, this is me, then go ahead and put the check mark and you know you don't need to provide that ID, okay? And, uh, but just make sure you provide that and then just take your ID just in the worst case scenario, just to double check and make sure we're doing the right thing in here. Now, section five, uh, go ahead and provide additional information if any, okay? Uh, also, it's asking if you have any other homes in Texas, go ahead and select, uh, go ahead and list the counties uh, where they're located right here in this little section right here. Under section six, pretty much your affirmation and signature, pretty much you're saying, hey, I do understand that if I make a false statement on this form, I could be found guilty of a class A misdemeanor or a state jail felony under penal code section 3710. Uh, go ahead and provide your name here, of course, your title, and then your signature on the bottom and today's date. So pretty much this is saying, yes, uh, we understand this is a legal document and we're filling it out correctly and uh, go ahead and take it to your Bear County district. And like I said a little while ago, this page three is providing you important information about the form. Anything that I miss, uh, let me know. Let me know, feel free, call me, text me, me or Jesse, and then we'll be able to assist you. But additional information, like especially like uh, like we were saying in this example of the home, if it was given to you as a will, then you will still need to provide additional information. So go ahead and review that as well. And uh, and thank you so much for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs> okay. Thank you for watching. And for more information, just let us know. And all our contact information is going to be down here at the bottom. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye.